Shalom. Before I get started, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rekahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at GMS. Peace, honor, and respect to you, brothers that's out there laboring, edifying, rightly divine the word, and truth and sincerity. And Shalom to you, believers out there at the Aki and Wa'akwa. And what I want to get into this morning is uh, I was just thinking, like, uh, don't let Satan steal your mind. I was listening to a, a YouTube channel, uh, this guy, and he was, you know, he goes into, uh, <laughs> he goes into, you know, quote unquote, black culture, how messed up it is. He goes into a lot of the rap, the rappers and, you know, it's a guy who been in the streets, but he changed his life. He not, a, he not, you know, claiming to be a Hebrew Israelite. He is an Israelite, but. You know, but I'll be listening to him because he be making some good points. But I, I, I what uh, struck my attention is, attention is when he said, don't let Satan steal your mind. All right. I think he said, don't let the devil steal your mind. But I'm going to title this, don't let Satan steal your mind. Because, you know, you learn in this truth as you go that this is the ultimate mental game. Okay. It's the ultimate mental game. A lot of times it's you versus you. All right. And every action start with a thought. So the scriptures, you know, tell us how to combat Satan. OK, the spiritual being Satan, his demon, the demons that hop on people to, you know, agitate you or irritate you or whatever going on. You know, we can't let Satan steal our mind, steal our peace. Is every day going to be peaches and cream? No. But, you know, hey, we got these scriptures to battle. Because what, what, what the script, matter of fact, let me just get this. Um, it just came to my mind. What's that? Is that 10? Or nope. Uh, Ecclesiastes 2, uh, verse 1, it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right. So when we came into this marvelous light, you know, <laughs> And you, you're, you're in sincerity and you're putting off things and you're trying to be obedient to the best of your ability because we still in this flesh. You know, we, we mess up. Hey, that irritates those demons. New levels, new devils. That's very true. Verse two, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him. How do we cleave unto Yahweh Bashem Yahusha through these scriptures? I remember I was listening to a Apostle Gabar, and he said the best way to stand is truth. I mean, it's all predestined, but he said a good way, of the best way is to keep your head in the book, okay? Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end, okay? So we ought to cleave unto the Lord, speaking to myself first and foremost, okay? That's why in stressful times, you know, I'm trying to learn, hey, start reading, start praying, I need to start fasting more. Like, that's what I really need to work on personally. But let's go to Ephesians, all right, chapter six. Because, you know, this is one of the, you know, I would say a, a popular chapter in the scriptures. But it's so true, man. It's it's something that we, we just can't read and get hype about as far as like not applying it. We got to learn to apply. That's another thing. I'm learning. You got to really learn to apply because, man, as farther, the, the, the farther along you get in this truth, you know, them demons, man, new levels, new devils. Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10, it said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. And that's so true. Again, these demons know who you are. Like they knew Yahweh Shah. All right. So let me, let me let's go here to John chapter 10, verse 10. Because it tell you what the thief cometh not. But to steal and to kill and to destroy, right? Satan come to do that. As well as these false teachers. You know what I'm saying? They not sincere. 
they come to stray you away from Yahweh Bashim Yahushah, stray you away from the teachers in its purest form. They come to stray you away, pull you away from uh, the right way, man, out of the way, out of the path. But what Yahweh Shah say, I am come that I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Yahweh Shah came to bring us life, eternity, prosperity. OK. That's what it was about. I am the verse 11. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And that's what he did. He put I keep saying he put Israel he put the nation on his back, man. He put on for Israel when he went up on that cross through his ministry. He put on, man. If it wasn't for him, we couldn't be reconciled back to Yahweh, the heavenly father, man. But the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan get in your mind and he can destroy some shit. Excuse my, my language. But, uh. Like I was saying, you know, we wrestle against these demons and they know who you are. And when you that's why when you go here to this account. Matter of fact, let me get slack you. Let me get a uh, Mark chapter four. And verse three. OK, listen to this. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow and it came to pass as he sowed some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up okay so we all so when you jump down to verse 14 what do it say it says the sower sow of the word okay verse 15 and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they heard, when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Right. Not being rooted and grounded. That's it further going in this parable. I just want to touch on that because, again, the, the ones that fell by the wayside, man, Satan can just come and snatch up. So we don't want to be the ones that fell by the wayside where Satan can enter your mind and you know, take you out this thing. Let me go here to Luke. Let me see. It might be the same. Okay, so when you go to Luke chapter four, right? Because again, Satan is going to tempt and he going to tempt and he going to tempt. And this example sh uh, shows that what? We got to combat Satan with the scriptures. Luke Chapter four, starting at verse one, and Yahweh shall being full of the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he hung, he afterward hungered, which proven fasting is very powerful. Even when you go to Edris, uh, second Edris, how he fasted and he was getting, you know, those the Lord was being able to reveal things to him in the spirit, but he had to fast first, you know, but continuing on in verse three, it says, and the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of the most high command this stone, that it be made bread. And Yahweh shall answer him saying, it is written. See, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of the most high, right? He was combating Satan with what the scriptures, because Satan know the scriptures. So you got to combat him with the scriptures. He know it. He know the scriptures, man. Verse five, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And best believe he showed him America, <laughs> you know. And the devil said unto him, all the all this power will I give thee and the glory of them for this is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give. I will. I give it. All right. So sh Satan does have power, man. And you can't sleep on that power, man. That's why it's instructions in the scriptures how to deal with these demons, man. How to deal with Satan. Verse seven: If thou will, if if thou will, therefore, therefore, will worship me, all shall be thine. And this is what happened to a lot of our people, a lot of people. Period. But speaking particularly to Israelites, they they into what Satan worship, and that's why they have their portion in his life, 
but it's soon going to be snatched away. Verse 8, And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shall thou serve. See? So Yahweh Shah was combating Satan with the scriptures, man. Okay? So now let's go back to Ephesians 6. And starting at verse 14, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth and having on the breastplate breastplate of righteousness. Okay? It says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith. All right, you're going to need that faith, man. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay? Because best believe they're going to be shooting at you, man. They're going to be tempting you, testing you. And that faith is that thing that's going to keep you in this, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep you strong. When you brought to a lower state, you having hard times. The faith is going to be activated from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And that's how you're going to you going to keep a, a right, man. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. Right. That's why brothers call it the Bible. What? They, they swore. All right. So this is what we got to use to fight, man. Our sword is, the, is the, the scriptures. That's how we get to going, <laughs> you know, swinging swords like Conan, man. Okay, because I want to get Matthew chapter 8, right? And I want to kind of get all these accounts. When you go to Matthew 8, now I'm going to get these in the NLT, right? When you go to Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 28. And this is pro this proved that, you know, these demons, man, once they get on people, hey, man, they just can take over. That's why the title is Don't Let Satan Steal Your Mind because he can get in your mind and just take over. How you out here bugged out. How you out here just in all type of folly and madness, you know, weaving webs, man, where it make it hard for you to get out. So Matthew 8, starting at verse 28, says what? Yeah, when Yahweh Shah arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of the Gardens, two men, Gadarenes, Two men who were possessed by demons met him. They lived in the cemetery and were so violent that no one could go through that area. See, they, they began screaming at him. Why are you interfering with us, son of the most high? So, see, this proved that these demons know who you are. They knew who Yahweh Shah was, of course, because it's Yahweh Shah, man. But they know who you are. They know who the elect are. OK, have you come here to torture us before? The most high is appointed time. So, you know, these demons, these devils, man, the Satan, he got an appointed time to run rampant before he took out of the way. Okay. There happened to be a large herd of pigs fleet feeding in the distance. So the demons beg, if you cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. All right, go. Yahweh shall commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. And that lets you know, man, how these demons, they can just hop on animals, people. You ever hear about dogs, <laughs> you know, a pack of dogs just mauling somebody to death? Yeah, man. And guess who commissioned these demons for real? It's the heavenly father because he's in control of Satan, man. Satan worked for him. So ultimately, these demons worked for him. You see? But you see, they knew who Yahweh Shah was. Let's get the account in Mark. We still in the NLT. In Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 1. All right. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. Gerasenes. When Yahweh Shah climbed out of the boat. A man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, 
restrain even with the chain. D these demons be having that, that strength, man. All right. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Yeah, that's why you see a lot of these cuckoo people out here, man. They be having the strength of 10 men. That's them demons on them. Day and night, he wandered among burial caves in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. And you see our, a lot of our people in the hood, they walk around here cuckoo or just people in general. That's them demons, man. That's Satan then got they vine. And the Lord gave them over to it, you know. And we got to pray that we don't be giving over to these uh, wicked spiritual entities, man. We, we blessed to, you know, be receiving this word. Brothers teaching the word. Brothers and sisters receiving it. That we in our right mind. We got our faculties. We got to be thankful for that. You feel me? Verse 6. When Yahweh was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. So these demons, they bow at Yahweh man. They already know who he is. They already know he ranked up. They already know, hey. That's Yahweh Shah, King of Kings. All right. They know. And they know you, brother. They know you, sister. They know you. You know? That's why they out of the blue, some craziness will happen to you from somebody. That's a demon hopping on them. Okay? But how do we combat that? With the scriptures. Like Yahweh Shah did. Okay? In uh in Luke. So now, um, Verse seven, with a shriek, he screamed, why are you interfering with me? Yahweh Shah, son of the most high power in the name of in the name of God. I beg you don't torture me. See, Yahweh Shah got that power, man. You know what I'm saying? And we got the power to combat these demons with the scriptures and how we conduct ourselves. Obedience is another uh, weapon. You see what I'm saying? That's another weapon. That's why if you 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 find yourself being more obedient, reading and doing things of that nature, you find yourself being more tested from these demons and tempted, man, because they know obedience is a way to combat. Just like these other nations, Esau know, you know us being obedient and aligned with our power he can't do nothing with us what's that in the book of what uh judith i believe where they was talking about that how like yeah if there's no fault found in these people is we go to war with them we gonna be put to shame but if they sin it's the same thing man with these demons now we in this flesh man we ain't gonna be perfect no nah. but again obedience and using our sword, which is this Bible. Hey, man, that's that's how you combat. All right. Verse eight, for Yahweh Shah had already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Yahweh Shah demanded, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. So a lot of these people ain't just got a demon. They got multiple hundreds. All right. Twenty. 50, hundreds of demons. Check this out. Verse 10, then the evil spirit begged him and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirit begged. Let us enter them. So Yahweh Shah gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs and and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. 2,000 pigs. So it could have been 2,000 demons on this man. Legion, that's many. Okay? Legion. Luke, chapter 8. Same thing. Verse 26, it says what? So they arrived in the region of the Gerasenes, Across the lake from Galilee, and Yahweh Shah was climbing out of the boat, and a man who was possessed by demons came out of to meet him. For a long time, he had been homeless and naked, living in a cemetery outside of town. Man, you, 
if you see that now, you're going to be like, man, that, that dude on something. And that's the, he on them, that's them demons. Demons give you over to the drugs. You know what I'm saying? Then you have a coke demon, a heroin demon. Just like you have a weed demon, a cigarette demon, a, a liquor, a alcohol demon. Okay, it's just, verse 28. As soon as he saw Yahweh Shah, he shrieked and fell down in front of him. Then he screamed, why are you interfering with me? See? So, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah can give you over. But then they can interfere. They can come. They can give you over. Or they can tell you, just like in Job. The Heavenly Father gave, you know, same permission to do these things to Job, but he said you just can't kill him. See? Why are you interfering with me, Yahweh Shah, son of the most high power? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. Verse 29, for Yahweh Shah had already commanded the evil spirit come out of him. This spirit had often took control of the man, even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles. He simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power, man. We can't let Satan steal our mind. Yahweh Shah demanded, what is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Yahweh Shah not to send them into the bottomless pit. There happened to be a large herd of, herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons begged him to let them enter into the pigs. So Yahweh Shah gave them permission. All right. Then the demons came out the man and entered the pigs, and an entire herd plunged down steep in the hillside into the lake and drowned. All right. So we get the point, but I wanted to read all three because they was worded different, you know. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know, they, they had similar accounts, but worded different. Just like if you ask three different people a story, they might give you similar versions, but then it's going to be worded different. You know what I'm saying? But we can't let Satan still our mind. And that's what we got to pray for, that we keep our mind right, that, that the Lord continually, continually be dealing with us, man, because this is serious. Now, I want to get these two scriptures closing out. Cause I thought about these these scriptures right here, all right? Because to not be given over to Satan, your mind not to be given over, your mind should be what? Let's get it. Ecclesiastes thirty nine verse one. But he that give his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. And be occupied in prophecies. And this is what we need to be giving our mind to. Speaking to myself first and foremost. Because there's a lot of stuff happening, man. And Lord willing, I got another lesson lined up. About, you know, the prophecies just jumping off the pages, man. Got some video clips, you know. But, uh, yeah, we got This is what we need to be giving our mind to. And the fact that brothers and sisters is, is reading and brothers is teaching. We are giving our mind to this, okay? We got other things that we delve into, but th that's the spirit of the Lord, man, that he not have, he don't got us on some street corner bugged out. Instead, we reading the scriptures. We trying to do the best that we can and be the best version of ourselves as we can be. And I want to get this, and it's the last scripture. And um, Isaiah, all right? So again, that's what we need to be giving our mind to, the prophecies, meditating the scriptures, meditating on the good things, all right? Meditating, uh, hey, on the evils to come, man. Continually getting built up. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Oh, yeah, I want to get that in the NLT, all right? It says, matter of fact, let me get in the KJV first. It says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee, right? Is every day going to be peaches and cream? No. Is you just going to live this blissful, peaceful life? No. But the Lord will give that balance, man. Ultimately, you will have that peace of mind, especially when you start reading the scriptures and listening to brother's videos, man. The Lord will, will talk to you through different, uh, will talk to you through, through brother's, you know, you might be going through something, then a, a video pop up 
and a brother might be speaking on something you're going through and give you comfort or words. OK, or you might read accounts in the scriptures and get get that spirit. So now I want to get in NLT. It says Isaiah 26 and three, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all who thoughts are fixed on you. Right. So we got to continually keep our mind on these scriptures, man. Of course, your day to day, you go to work, you might have a family, you got this, you got that. But ultimately, man, we got to we got to go back to go back to home base, man. A home base is what the scriptures. So, Lord willing, this is edifying to the next lesson. Shalom.